Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Tonight's presentation is on centralization and the genius of America. It was inspired by an article regarding the intelligence community saying that they believe that the biggest threat to U.S. power comes from decentralized, leaderless, geographically dispersed groups. What's funny about this is that the United States was the first nation on Earth to purposely set up decentralized power. So while the intelligence community is ostensibly worried about the loss of U.S. power, they're terrified that after subverting the Constitution and accruing more power to the federal government, they may lose influence if people go back to the original system. And they're correct. The Founding Fathers specifically set up the Constitution to prevent groups like the CIA existing. They saw the example of ancient Greece as their template. The Greek world had no capital. Each city-state was sovereign within its own jurisdiction. Because of this system, there was no centralized taxation authority. The Greek middle class grew larger and amassed greater wealth. The very word education comes from the Greek word for leisure time. In other words, with all the extra leisure time, they were able to develop science, philosophy, drama, etc. The Greek world collapsed once Alexander the Great conquered it and centralized everything. Once that was accomplished, a very small group of men in a centralized position could rob the middle class and amass wealth for themselves via taxation. As taxes rose and rose and rose yet again, the average Greek had less leisure time as he had to work more hours to pay higher taxes. Suddenly, there was less time for inventions, philosophy, art. Greek civilization went to decline. The Founding Fathers, seeing all the examples of history, decided to set up a government with an incredibly weak federal system, with most of the power vested in the states. Under this system, America's wealth exploded. It became the richest, most powerful nation on earth. But as federalism increased and the state system was destroyed to be replaced by the age-old centralized power model, the government started increasingly taxing commerce to fund its own growth, whereupon it exploded in size and ran up, ran up massive deficits. In 1945, for instance, the total government percentage of GDP in America was less than 2%. Today, it's greater than 60%. All these government jobs created are parasitic to the businesses that produce the wealth. Without business and the savings of its citizens, the government has no income. So a small government percentage is viable when the rest of the GDP is massive from the free market. But as the government balloons in size and takes greater and greater wealth, the system starts to buckle and collapse. Think of it in terms of biology. The parasite must never get bigger than the host off which it feeds. When that happens, the host will die. According to most economists, we're on the verge of a massive crash which will dwarf the 2008 financial meltdown. This all happened due to centralized power. So while I feel for the CIA regarding the fears of decentralized groups, I have to beg to differ. The greatest threat to the United States is not decentralized groups but centralized groups, which amass power to themselves, suck the wealth from the middle class and spy on their own citizens. Their influence on the U.S. economy has been catastrophic. When the U.S. finally collapses, it will not have been due to decentralized groups, but due to centralized power. And let's not forget what the CIA stands for, the Central Intelligence Agency. They can only exist in an atmosphere of centralized power.